The first step to truly learning something new is to remember it. Very often, though, we find it hard to remember what we learned a couple of years ago, sometimes even a couple of minutes ago. You look up a new phone number, and then two minutes later, you have to look it up again. Why is this, and how can we prevent this happening in our classes to our students? According to John Sveller, an educational psychologist, learning happens when new information is transferred from the working memory to the long-term memory and becomes connected to things we already know. Think of this system as a series of wires that connect everything together. Since our prior knowledge is already firmly integrated into our long-term memory, the new knowledge will have something to which it can connect. And once it is connected, it makes it harder for us to forget. Let's look at the most important cognitive process involved in integrating new memories. Our senses perceive information from the world around us and pass that on to our working memory. This working memory, however, has a limited capacity, just like the cache in a computer which is much smaller than the main memory. Only a limited amount of information can be held and processed simultaneously. It works like a container that gets filled up over time. Because of this limitation, it becomes essential to help important information transfer into our long-term memory which, as far as we know, provides virtually unlimited storage capacity. One of the best ways to transfer new knowledge to the long-term memory is to do something with it. By giving learners opportunities to work with information, for example, writing things down, completing quick quizzes, working on engaging tasks, or discussing the implications of new facts, we help them increase the connections to their long-term memory. This reduces the effort of learning something new. The effort of learning new things is a type of cognitive load. There are two main types of cognitive load. The first one is called intrinsic load. The more complex the connections are that need to be made for new information to be stored in long-term memory, the higher the intrinsic load. In fact, when we say that a topic is hard, it usually means that it has a high intrinsic load as many connections need to be made for it to be properly wired up. The second kind of cognitive load is known as extraneous load. All additional elements fall under this category. This includes distractions in the environment, irrelevant information or decorative elements on slides, which can all eat up valuable working memory. Your brain is so busy processing everything around you that relevant information may get pushed out of the working memory before it can make its way into your long-term memory. So by the time the brain has sorted through a wall of text on a lecturer's slide and identified what is truly essential, the important information may have already been forgotten. This act of combining of spoken or written information with nonverbal elements was first described by Alan Paivio, a psychologist. He called it the dual coding theory, and it explains that there are two different systems in our brains that process information. The verbal system is responsible for reading, speaking, and listening to speech. The nonverbal system is responsible for processing sound, visuals, smell, and touch. The dual coding theory emphasizes the point that if both systems are activated simultaneously, we form stronger and more sustainable memories. Richard Mayer, an educational psychologist, later expanded Paivio's work. He developed the cognitive theory of multimedia learning. Manu Kapoor explains this. So multimedia learning is a you know, it's, it's an advanced theory in and of itself. I mean, the idea is that learning is multimodal. To learn and un to understand something, I need to be able to learn it or understand it in multiple representations. Could be symbols, could be words, could be images, could be dynamic simulations, could be immersive environments. The whole spectrum is there. And part of the scientific research is to understand when, how, why, and for whom, in what context do these multiple representations, multiple modalities work. So, multimedia learning is an advanced theory of itself. The idea is that learning is multimodal. To learn and to understand something, I need to be able to understand it in multiple representations. 
could be symbols, could be words, could be images. So, learning is more efficient when related verbal information is presented together with visual information. Therefore, adding visual elements to written text or spoken words can really help prevent our brains from becoming overloaded. Since another simple way to deepen the understanding of new information is with repetition, how much of this video do you think you will remember? Let's perform a small experiment. Do something with your new knowledge by writing down everything you can recall and then rewatching. You might be surprised by the results. <laughs>